Okay, assalamu alaikum and good evening to all of you. I would like to welcome everyone in the sixth GSO summer workshop session that I will be presenting this night, inshallah. And congratulations for all of you who viewed and learned from the previous sessions. And I guess now you deserve a bit of a break about petroleum world. Uh, so for today's session is more about the how, more than the why and what. My aim today is actually is to inspire you and to to learn to feed your geoscientific curiosity and also to use the time during these days especially that we are now uh let's say locked down <laughs> and uh, we cannot travel uh, anywhere so we ne we need to utilize this time and uh, of course we'll focus on how to utilize it in terms of geology uh, my name is Hussam al-Rawahi a geologist uh, I'm working in at petroleum development of Oman PDO here in uh, Muscat Sultanate of Oman and I'm also a volunteer as the GSO, the Geological Society of Oman editor, and I'm one of the technical subcommittee. Uh, for me, I've been in GSO for the past eight years as a volunteer, and uh, where well, I had the chance to meet many people and had the chance also to travel with different group to different location here in Oman to learn about the geology of Oman. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the GSO committee for this opportunity to present and especially thanks for Abdul Munam Zakwani for the effort to organize this event and to Dr. Muhammad Al Kindi uh, from the Earth Science Consultancy Center for the, this collab uh, collaboration with the Georgia Society of Oman. As a reminder, the level expected in this session is for student and fresh graduate and it is different from previous sessions. Uh, that it will be more of a demo. So it's not a lecture or let's say a workshop where, where I just explain things. It's actually uh, more of an interactive, informal session again. And I did, uh, so that's why I didn't prepare much of the slides. I will really, really like to have your participation in the session. So I will be checking the comments and co your contribution as we go through the different topics. Uh, by the way, I might jump from time to time to English to Arabic to define some vocabulary. However, the main discussion will be in English. Uh, I need also to mention that most of the location that I will show in Google Earth, actually I took it from different KMZ files. And this is uh, Google Earth uh, files throughout the web and different websites and different universities. And also there are some of them are actually mine while I'm exploring in Google Earth. So I'm aiming not to exceed one hour in this ses uh, session and uh, could be very short if in case it's only me that who actually talk. That's why I really appreciate if you use, uh, if uh, you can use uh, the comment section. So I, I will have, uh, I'm logged in into different uh, uh, desktop. So I'll be able to see your comments, your questions, your contribution as well. Okay, by that, I will just show you the slides. So if it can show now in the screen, I hope, okay. Good. So this is the list of the summer lecture that uh, GSO with the Earth Science Consultancy Center uh, prepared and organized. So we started with Dr. Mohammed Al Kendi, uh, overview of the petroleum system of Oman, and then uh, to the geophysical data and seismic interpretation workflow, and finally he explained about the play and prospect evaluation. And then uh, uh, Dr. Uh, we went to Mohammed Al Amri overview of geomechanics and its application to petroleum industry. And we, before uh, yesterday, we had uh, the petroleum sedimentology and its application in hydrocarbon exploration. So Dr. Talal Al Aulaqi uh, reservoir lecture, which is the reservoir modeling and volume estimation, actually it is postponed, so and it will be notified in further notice. So what is about today. So it's learning geology virtually. So while we are sitting at home, we'll try to learn and I will just show you some tricks and I hope it will be interesting for you to uh, see these features, especially the tools that normally I use myself to learn geology while I'm sitting at home. I are planning to go to an outcrop just to have an idea before just jumping into the field. Okay. So something I really like to show with uh, the students who normally when they come to the company to train or I meet them in the Geological Society of Oman events, I would I always like to show this picture to them. And as you can see, uh, you can see from the screen, 
I hope it's everything is clear. I mean, the screen is okay with you and the voice is clear. We can see a guy, a knight, who in a white horse, actually two, two horses, crossing the jungle. And the title of this uh, picture is Forest Has Eyes by, uh, by this guy, Biff Dolittle. And why the thing that I really like about this, because in the this is the first instant, you will see that these two horses are crossing the jungle. If you look at further, you start to see some eyes over here. And then if you see it more, you will start to see another eye. And then another one over here. And then you see actually it's a face, it's not just an eye. There is a nose, there is a mouth, the same here, the same goes here. and when I'm telling you that there is actually 13 faces in this uh, picture, you will start, your eyes will start to calibrate and start to find, for example, this one. And I hope everyone is seeing this and this picture, uh, this uh, face, another one over here. There is in behind, there is two. So what, what's the message here? The message is if you don't know it, it's difficult uh, to know it. <laughs> so uh, I, it could be cheesy a bit, but this is if you don't have it in your mind, it will be difficult to see it because your eyes won't be able to pick it, and that's why you always need to see more rocks. And if you were, if, if you are now talking about the geology, if you see more rocks, you start your eye will start to try to define a feature or a reference that it uh, it saw before. It's the same uh, phenomena that uh, when you want to buy a car. You want to notice in the street, but once you start to have an eye, or you picked one car, uh, you will start to see it everywhere. And this is uh, how actually the brain works. It's sometimes it's it's biases it by itself and trying to find out where's the location or what it knows. Uh, that's why even in the thin section, when you see it under the microscope, you might say, okay, I can see quartz, feldspar, I can see different kind of grains, but then. If you notice more, you will try to, and somebody just directed you, you will see, okay, now I can see, actually there's some other grains uh, I need to de define. So that's why it's always good to, when you go to the field to have different people, different set of eyes, actually to help each other and try to share this knowledge. Awareness, so why this, the whole slide with one word only, awareness. For me, awareness is very powerful. Many people are focusing on the knowledge, skill, and mastery. For me, awareness is actually the first thing to, uh, to, to, to have it, because with awareness, you will start to notice things, and you build that interest. And that's why when we go to this slide, and this is actually, uh, it's a sales funnel. So it, they said it's, if you go from awareness, and then it will change into interest, and then to decision, and then action. So uh, that's why the marketing, the sales are they all using this funnel and this is more detailed, but it's less, let's try to apply it in the geoscience uh, research. First, you will, aware, uh, you will be aware of some kind of rocks or on the field, you will see some structure, you see some different lithologies and also, uh, let's say even the fossils. And then you will build that interest by that, and then you decide, okay, now I would like to actually understand this. So if you don't have that awareness of what is it and what you want to know, it will be difficult to get that interest. So uh, so if you get, go to immediately to, to knowledge, you already passed the awareness level. But again, you need to be aware of what exactly you want to see. So that's why we have the scientific method, which is very powerful. Ask the question, and then you do the background research, construct the hypothesis, test, and then you do the, and you test uh, test with the experiment, procedure working, yes or not, and then as, until you need to communicate, uh, communicate uh, the results. But uh, the thing that ask the question, actually it's always about the question. If you have the, let's say the right suitable question, this is exactly what you need to have. And this is what is the scientific method. You need to ask the question, and this is what I'm encouraging every people, you don't need to Ask other people question. Ask uh, the question that you are interested in. You s you see something. You try to build that understanding for yourself because you need to teach yourself before you teach others. So when you go to the field uh, during uh, field trips, 
or during a field work with your colleagues, even when you drive driving uh, from Muscat to the other places, you try to notice and you start to ask this question: Why this rock is actually this color? Why that uh, rock is higher than the other one? Why this mountain is? Uh, I can see it everywhere, but in this I cannot see it. So when you build these questions, start with this: uh, uh, this five questions, which it's like your start: where, what, when, how, why, and who. And then by that you will build up as you go to have it. So why I'm I'm starting with this uh, introduction because this is the aim of what I'm trying to show in Google Earth. Google Earth, I want to be able to explain the world. Of course, I want to go. There are some location. I will just show what how you can actually extract information from geology. But again, my aim here is to show you how you can learn geology while sitting at home virtually. One of the software that I use and I really like, uh, Google Earth, and this software it have two application, uh, two version, two application. So one you can actually install it in your desktop, and there's the other one uh, that it's now the new newest one in Google Chrome. So you can access it and you can just uh, uh, check it out there. But uh, for now, uh, for us, I will be so focusing on the application version because it have more capability and plus I'm used, I'm used to it. The, there's other software uh, than Google Earth about the mapping, but again, I'm comfortable with Google Earth, that's why I'm using it. All right, so just to give you a bit of Google Earth introduction, just enjoy the video, just to see the capability of this software. Okay, so by that, I can start Google Earth. And uh, as you open this software, you will have this startup tips. Uh, you can go through it, but uh, we'll talk about it while you, I, I'm, explain, I'm explaining to you some of this location that I prepared. So again, I will be checking the comments. If you have any contribution, any ideas, how to make the session more fun, interesting, because this is the aim. We are learning and we're trying to learn from each other. So the first question is from uh, a guy I know, <laughs> Badr uh, is, is Is it a free application? So yes, uh, Google Earth is a free application. You can download it actually from Google Earth. Just Google Google Earth and you can find it. And again, as I mentioned, there is uh, Google Chrome. So the video that I showed you from Google Chrome, it can direct you into Google Earth where you can have uh, a newest version of it, uh, online based version. Uh, but here it's more of the software one, okay? So please keep it coming, the comments and the uh, questions. As an introduction, this is the layout of the Google Earth. I know that ma many of, uh, of you are familiar with Google Earth, but uh, again, I'm here to, just to see the, the geology part of it. So as an introduction, this is the layout. You can see the sidebar in the left corner, and then you see the toolbar. Uh, up here, you see the navigation. You have the north direction. In case, uh, just for you to know that if you rotate it, of course, you will rotate the the Earth itself. And this is the beauty. You have the Earth in palm of your hand, and, and this is very good uh, to actually you can play with it. And then you have uh, this, uh, which is moving up and down, and left and right, and then zoom in, zoom out. I will be using the mouse mainly here, so I have the right click to hold and move, and the scroll to zoom in, zoom out, and here are we, Oman. 
we'll try to make it in the north direction. And then you have the elevation over here, which is very important at the bottom of the screen. I hope it's clear for you. Also the coordinates, which is capturing, as you can see, as I uh, hover the pointer, you can see that it changes dramatically from one place to another. Nice. So as I told you, the elevation, because it's now, I will explain why it's zero meter here now, later. So, and this is, you have my place. So it's where the, you can create your own projects and you can just uh, build, and I will show you some uh, tips of how you can build. And this is what I'm intended in the end of this uh, session. I really wish if also each one of you can go to Google Earth and create it their own project to see. And you have the layers, which is the primary database that is, it's there uh, as you installed uh, Google Earth. And I will go through them, not all of them, because there's a lot of information as you can see, for example, gallery, and then there is, uh, you can just open and have more file uh, around it. All right, so this is just a quick introduction. If you want to go to the option, you can see the, you can change the, uh, coordinate system over here and also the texture color. I didn't play any, with anything in this, so uh, I just keep it as it is. I just choose the degree, minutes, and seconds. And there's other tabs that you can go and check check it out by yourself, and you see how we can uh, have it. So you have the show startup. Uh, you remember, if you remember the window that I showed in the beginning, so this is you can just uh, uncheck the box and it will disappear. I hope I'm not giving the impression that I'm marketing Google Earth, but, but again, it's I'm not getting paid. I really wish if I get paid for this marketing, but it's fine. Actually, it's something I would, would like you to actually do, share it and use it. So uh, this is our the introduction. I created this folder. So this is this is the file what I call Learning Geology Virtually. It's in KMZ file. So this is this is the file of the Google Earth of how you can actually share and export uh, uh, and save it in your desktop and you can share it with your friends and other people just to learn from each other, okay? So we'll start with the terrains, uh, all right? So what, what you can see as I showed you here is the zero elevation. Why there is zero? Because now I didn't enable the terrain feature in Google Earth in a way that I can see what's happening. So I will zoom in to Jabal Akhdar area, the Oman Mountains, as you can see it over here. So you won't see any much of differentiation except for the color and texture of these images, the satellite images. But when I just click on terrain, which is in the layers uh, section, yes, now you can see that there is something change and you see the elevation. Actually, it's it's before it was zero and now it's it reached 1000 and then it goes down why is that because now we are going to from higher elevation to a smaller elevation and this is the beauty i can just go and check out what's happening and one of the place the first places is the dome itself so as i, sh I showed you here is there's a way that actually you can move but again i will use the ma mouse and voila, actually you see the terrain. You can see how the mountain are there. And this is one of the beautiful thing. I mean, I can see this dome structure. So you see the layers are dipping this side and there's another layer dipping that side. And if you continue, uh, let's create a cross section. You see that you can actually build a dome. So this is what we call the one mountain dome. Or Jabal Akhdar dome. And here's the geological window. Of, uh, which shows the older rocks. So if you go to this location, you'll start to see this uh, pre cambrian rocks here, uh, for example, uh, Mahil formation. It's one of the pre cambrian rocks, the glacial uh, deposits. Uh, and there is a the Hadash, the cap carbonate. So there we have this location, but you can see this is all the Cretaceous rocks, but then you see, uh, you see the older in the middle. So that's why one of the features is that uh, the, the terrain will help you in using it with a 3D. Okay. Again, so I'll check. Do we have a map of Oman that we can uh, calibrate with Google? 
ستي تيوند محمد الجابري اي ويل شو يو ان شاء الله اوكي سو اي سبوك اوريدي اباوت ذا 3 دي فيتشر اند ليتس جو تو ون اوف ذا لوكيشن اجين اي ويل جست ونت شو يو سم فيتشرز ذات يو ويل بي يوزينج ات So when you go to buildings, you will need to again to click on 3D buildings because the building is different than terrain. So we won't deal much with building, but it's something also to have fun while you are exploring for geology. You can explore other stuff. So you can see this 3D model has been created by one designer of the different pyramids. Here is the Sphinx, Abu Hall. And you can see, uh, of course, you can just understand the elevation. You see the different geology surrounding this uh, one of the seven wonders of the world. Okay, so there is a, a program actually called, a, as I remember, SketchUp. And this is a 3D model that program software that you can actually build your yeah, and design the field. So that's why it's not in Google Earth. Actually, you need to find another software. I will check with Saud Alhamdali if you have background about free software or program close to Petrail or other software which help us to learn how to analyze rocks, anything related to technology will be more useful. All right, uh, Saud, there is different software, but it depends to what software you want to use. For example, if you want to use for petroleum industry, it will be different from the mining, of course, and it's different for the sedimentology world work. So for maps, uh we we can you can use arcgs it's very famous uh, software it can be so i so add i'm sorry <laughs> uh, uh so you can use uh arcgs it's one of the uh, famous softwares for creating maps petrel is very powerful and uh, there is other software which uh, i will need just to think about it uh which is can be used but uh Again, I will come back to you about this. So let's see. Uh, point, and we go to the uh, number three now, point, path, and polygons. And this is, I will try to explain about the toolbars function. So I just focused on Al-Kaaba uh, al So the Al-Kaaba, you can see here Mecca, Saudi Arabia, and you can see the building now, Burj al -Sa'a and stuff and one of the things that what I wanted to show here so again I always try to link it to uh, uh, to direct it into the north direction what I want you to have here is Jabal al Nur so Jabal al Nur is where Ghar Hira is our prophet was going uh, there uh, to worship and I'm um, actually I forgot where, where it is. <laughs> so uh, let's say it's somewhere here, and I'm sorry for that. It's actually, yeah. Anyhow, we can just use so we can use this tool to actually direct where exactly you want to pinpoint. So, uh, most probably to this one. Yeah, I think this is the one. Yep. Okay, that's the one. Yes. So in this, what they call the Jabal Nur, Jabal al Nur, and uh, you can just, uh, by clicking on the tool over here, you can rename it, like say Jabal and nur And this is one of the important thing, I mean, in Google Earth that you mark your location because it will give you also the latitude and longitude, the coordinates of the location. By here, you can also explain uh, a mountain where our Prophet was worshipping. Okay, so you can, and then you can change also the icons. So you can customize it. But here, normally I use this letters. So if it is G for me, I will just uh, anything geology, I will just put G. G. Anything as attraction, it's either A or just uh, a photo site. If it is a museum, I'll we'll just put M. There is also uh, some icons, but I prefer to use this uh, labels just to to categorize it in a way that I will be understanding it later. Okay, and then you can. Uh, I will talk about the other one, but this is this is like the marks. You can say an attraction, and then you just say okay, and then you can see that uh, that actually 
the icon has ch been changed here. I can use the other thing, which is the polygon. So I would like to draw a polygon of the Jebel. So I'll just click into more. And then you see, you can edit it. So in a way that the area, can, you can change the color or you just make it outline only. So I just want to see the, uh, the outer boundary without anything to color it. By the way, you can, if you put it as a field, you can actually change the capacity and make it like 50, which is the transparency. So normally I use this to, just to indicate a few places. And the measurement, while you are doing this, you have the parameter and the area calculated for you with the different uh, uh, units that it can be used. Okay. Also, there is path. You just try to build the path according to one where you want to go. But I normally use the uh, the ruler. So I just link and try to say like uh, our prophet was walking 12 kilometers just to reach where the Al Kaaba was. So that's why it's something to keep in mind. And I will show you some example more in the Georgia realm. All right. So this is again very quickly as an introduction to, to make you familiar with the different tools that we have in Google Earth. The image overlay, and this is one of the questions Muhammad Al Jabri was asking. So let's see. Let's go to back to Oman. I will open Google. Let's say. Oman Geology. That's why now you are using different tools just to understand, to be able to actually uh, understand what's happening. So I will take this subsurface uh, Oman location, the subsurface the map. I have it already. So I will just uh, Oman Geology. Just save. And then you put image overlay. So if you check here, it's add image overlay. By going to browse, you select where you saved your uh, photo. We call it one test, open. Now you have it here. It's the thing with Google, if you have the coordinates, it will be go really good. I mean, just writing the coordinates, it will show up. But here you need now to fix it in a way that either you hold the shift button and try to move it so it's like changing uh, in this way, or if you move it just from one direction, you can actually squeeze the, and change the scale. So you need to really to be careful here to rotate, to rotate it, and here is to actually to move it. And you always, when you want to do that, is to make it transparent. Then you try to move in a way that it can be linked into the. Uh, where exactly. So you will zoom in, zoom out. You try to fix it in a way that it's almost matching. I can't tell you that it will be difficult really to match it exactly, but you try your best. And to help you more, because since I'm talking about you can go to borders, you click on borders, and then you see all the borders of the different country. And then by that, you can try to move and Fix it in a way that uh, it match now, like you see in the far area. So the good thing that you can utilize, uh, I will just press OK. So you can utilize the images, the overlay images with the 3D and the terrain. So sometimes I just go like this. Oops. Somehow it will be cover covering the rocks. So uh, this is wrong because this is off your light color but it will reach to, into the Cretaceous uh, boundary. So that's why it's not accurate as I mentioned to you, but then you need to fix it in a way that it's clear. But you can see the most of this purplish color is in the off your light. So this is if you go to the legend. So you use your terrain 3D and try to move it and overlay it accordingly to what map you want to show. And you come zoom in. You can see that uh, it's not perfectly match because as you can see the distance, this is the real, uh, about in a cost, but then my image is not overlaid uh, rightfully. Okay, so this is one of the important things that you can do in Google in terms of geology. You can put geological maps actually in this uh, area. 
in the area that you want to understand and then you see it and you, as i showed you just a moment ago you go to google and write the for example sometimes i just go to let's say i australia geological you select which one you want and then you try to fix it so there's a different uh, maps and then that's why you need to choose and try have fun Okay, so I hope I answered you, Mohanad, about this. So the other two, let's go to, we spoke about the image, the historical images feature. Ara, Ara Lake. This lake is very interesting, and especially there was uh, an addition, uh, an issue in uh, National Geography magazine. They explained about it, and you can see that uh, what's happening if you click on this icon, which is the show historical imagery. Actually, you can go back on to in time and then you see the different, what's happening to this lake as you go toward, let's say, let's go to 1984. Okay, we'll wait. Now you see the difference. The lake was there. And then as you go to the recent time, it will disappear. And one of the interesting, if I just enable the photos in Aral, and uh, yes, this is what you have. You have a, a bit uh, shallow, very shallow lake. This is a very beautiful image showing you what's happening. There was boats in this uh, one in that time, but now there's nothing. Only camels just next to the boat. So a very nice picture, uh, by the way, because. Uh, different kind of camel than what we have in Oman. All right, so uh, again, I'm going very quickly and sorry for that because uh, actually I didn't even start the geology part and we're already 30 minutes of the time. So uh, sorry if I started to board you. Another thing very interesting what you have in Google, we are in London now. You, saw, you see this uh, orange little guy, just click it here and you are there. You actually, in London Eye, you see the bridge. Actually, you see the big bend, the Westminster, uh, Westminster uh, building. Big bend, they are modifying it now. But this is one of the good thing in uh, the street view. The street view feature actually can show you the, the different uh, a location why as you are sitting there and uh, the thing that uh, we don't have it everywhere in the world so that's why in America it's mostly because uh, it needs a different machine different equipment to collect these photos 3d imagery all right so enough from the introduction if you have another any uh, any comments it will be good so I see in a comment when a sort uh, it seems I got disconnected but I hope uh, you can hear me now. All right, so geo exploration. So there is some location that I uh, selected for you, which is, we'll start with the plate tectonics. The nice thing with Google, actually every color represents something. So you see the continental uh, platform over here. So, and this is the oceanic uh, crust, and this is the continental crust, sorry. And you see how it shows you it's more shallower because the color intensity indicates something. So the darker the blue, the higher is, uh, the deeper is the sea, where th this one is more shallower. And you can see Argentina, how long, and if you use the ruler, their continental shelf is around 1,800. So you can see it differs from one country to another. So that's why it's involved here in geopolitics. But let's go to this location, which you can see the divergent plate boundary. As you can see, this is where this shape of Africa, a bit matching with the South, and uh, if you remember the continental drift theory, this is the mid-oceanic ridge. And you can see it, how it's zigzagging across the ocean and you can see different strikes as well in these places. And if you go 
deeper you can see a lot of movements happening and there are some photos i don't know if it will show anything geologic so it depends to what you have but this is the interesting part if you trace it in a way that you go to the uh the land part of it you'll start to see these features elongated even the lakes it's a bit elongated as you can see it here so this is one of the places that actually people go there to learn the turns and drift in uh, Iceland. I hope I will be lucky to find a nice photo showing this divergent boundaries here and so the sea floor spreading. All right. So as I, I told you before, when you add something, you can actually write an information about it, which is the mid Atlantic Ridge is a divergent blood boundary that surfaces above the sea level in Iceland. And this is the location of it. So again, you try to use Google Earth by tracing. I mean, it will be difficult, of course, to do it in reality, but then you try to understand what's happening here and you have just a clue of how the seafloor spreading can occur. Let's go to Mariana Trench. 6,000 kilometers. You can notice the intensity of the black color and there's here's where the is a convergent boundary where uh, two oceanic cr uh, crusts are uh, uh, not abducting the sub uh, uh, yeah, subduct subducting into the each other and you can see if you put the elevation uh, the co uh, uh, if you check the elevation you can see how deep it is very deep and if you go to the boundary of the continental, you can actually focus and notice that small island, and this is what is we call the ring of fire. As you go, this so this small island, why it's elongated? And this is one of the things you ask yourself, why it is elongated? Because the, as the plate is moving uh, around, it shifts. So new uh, continental uh, crust is forming and then it moves. That's why you have this elongated, as you can see, where the subduction, where the volcano is happening there, and then you trace it across until you reach a different, uh, another continental body. San Andreas Fault, the famous transform fault. What you can notice here, and this is uh, one of the amazing thing. You can see the wadi or this canyon crossing and then it cuts and then it comes back here because the the fault is still moving one from one place to another so we always hear from uh, or we read from books that san andreas fault but now you can actually go there and you try to learn by yourself by understanding for example let's say uh we want to measure the uh, the area or how the the line is, how long, how the displacement is. So if we can say we click from here to another, we just click here and here, and you can see around half kilometers in this location. So you see how can, uh, so you can relate in, uh, somehow to how this fault. And if you want more information, you can just, go to and read and uh, this is like i took it from a book so the transform boundary i can write down the description but if i want more information about that i just add a link so i can j actually go to clicking this tab add a link i go to google again google is my friend san andreas fault you can see different pictures here Let's go to Wikipedia or whatever. So you want this information, you can just copy paste it or click the link, go back to Google Earth. It's okay, it's very important because it will stay there. And then you will have it there. So whenever you want to understand what's happening here and you want to come back later, you just click on this link, which will uh, direct you into the page of where you find find in Wikipedia and then you start to learn about it. As you can see the picture here, you can read about the geology and whatever you need to understand. All right. Another place, if you talk about the plate boundaries. Uh, 
the Red Sea. So let's notice together. What do you notice here from one side to another? You can see this dark brown colors of rocks splitted somehow in this location. And then you have covered by this yellow stuff. So one by one, as, the, as I showed you in the picture before, you need just to absorb what's the image and what the data is showing you. So this is a sea floor spreading because we know that this plate, the Arabian plate, is moving away from the African plate. And then you can see actually it's happening because this is one of the active uh, boundaries where we can say that we are moving towards uh, the northeast in a rate, which I know in Oman is 9 millimeter per air. So we are relatively fast if we talk about the geological time. But here you can also see the Great Rift Valley. And actually, I think I had a picture. I can, uh, yeah. I prepared for you just to see that this is the location and this is the Rift Valley. So I can just click on this properties and we'll reduce the transparency. So you see where, how it is. Okay, sorry. You need just to press okay. And then you try to understand. So actually even the vegetation itself, if I just, Check in. You see, even the vegetation is de is changing from one place to another, and this is, can be effect of the this rift valley. So why is that? You ask the uh, five questions that I ask why and how and when it's happening. You need to need more information. You just go to Google and try to read it. Right click. Uh, sorry. Uh, add. You can add an image if you want. Add a web image or local image. You can uh, just mark it with the uh, market and label it uh, with the different colors and you just check the altitude and you keep it there. So you can build your own project as I did here, it's just going to three different location and then write down what I can want uh, to know. So one of the thing also, let's talk about type of Delta. So if you are in a petroleum industry and they told you this is a delta a deltaic environment. You found a reservoir and it's a deltaic environment. So you will say, okay, the first thing, if you are familiar with the Nile Delta, Nilta, you will have this rectangle shape, not a rectangle, sorry, a triangle shape, sorry. And you can see how it links to the Nile River. And you have this kind of, this shape. So when you will start to, and they ask you where to drill, you have that familiarity of the shape of the Delta that I know that it is, unconfined, it's not like the Nile where it's restricted only in these places. So if you can zoom in, you see it's just moved from one place to another. And you can see also the elevation from 20 until it goes to less than that, which means the gravity is changing, the elevation is changing. And then you have this big fan, it's going out and there is small, uh, there is small uh, river crossing by, as you can see here. And you can see still there is some channels in the delta itself. And that's why normally in the petroleum industry, you will try to find out where is this uh, uh, the, uh, river. I hope I'm, I'm okay. I mean, you're following me and you are interested actually, because this is uh, very fun. I, am, I always like to use, uh, because now I'm building that a visual uh, database that I have in my mind about Delta. But then you ask yourself, is this the only Delta shape that I can find? Nope. Immediately, let's jump from Egypt into the Mississippi. This is a Delta. But so again, north direction. And you see how it is. You see, if you let's have now more than one look. Please go ahead with the comments. I really wish if you can just add your comments as well or questions. But again, I won't be able to answer them because again, I'm jumping from one uh, country to another. Myself, I don't understand yet the fully uh, geology of Oman. So don't expect me to understand the geology of the world. But uh, this is a chance to actually to share with each other yeah, the, the knowledge. So you can see the Delta, how it comes from the river, which is the Mississippi Delta. And you can understand, it. I had the chance to go actually to the Mississippi. And if we zoom in, you can see now the, the meandering river, how it changes. And you can see how the point bar and where it's the, our reservoir. 
and there is the cut bank as the water is coming it cuts this uh, it's erode this section and it build and or deposit the sands in over these places so you can see how it can uh, be found as a meandering so if let's say if you will try to drill here you won't say i will drill left or right you will try to find the direction of the channel and then you try to build up where you drill but if you just let's say you do a borehole image and you try to find out the value flow direction this direction will show this uh, toward the southeast southwest and here it will show to northeast so that's why you have you need a cluster so that's why you will ask i would like to have a cluster of borehole image analysis across the field in order to understand if this is a meandering or not and by the way like, as i told you google earth color is real so why it's brown if you want to check it out check it in wikipedia but it's brown because it's the number it's the let's say the amount of sediment this uh, river is carrying from north of us and this is a very big river by the way you can actually you can trace it here until yep north side of uh, uh, usa and it then it injects all this sediment and that's why you have this uh, river dominated delta and then it shifts from one place to another sometimes it goes this way and then it changes to this way and there's a, a by the way just a, a fact there's a human effect in it in which they building dams building the cities can actually affect uh, your uh, delta shapes okay so another place that i really love to show about the rivers is going to argentina I hope I will find it very quickly because I, I didn't say, oh yeah, okay. So you see here, this is a beautiful picture showing you the migration of the channels. Yeah, it's coming up now. Beautiful, yeah? So the river actually was here and then it started to migrate. As I showed you in the Mississippi, this is it's more of control of vegetation, but here there's no much vegetation. So actually it started to move. And as you go, so you know that the good channel the good sand you will find it in the near the river but if you drill it outside you will have more of shale so that's why if you link it to the like, uh, finding hydrocarbon reservoir actually this is one of the good thing that you see how it changes so there is different examples but uh, of the rivers i won't go through it i will let you go and try to find out where you can find different shape of rivers go to australia go to europe we don't have river in Oman, unfortunately, but uh, go to different places where you can find river and try to understand and have that, uh, build your database about it. Namibia is one of the places that we have uh, desert environment, Aulian, so you can see the sands, how it looks like a different kind of stuff. So I would, I if I want to know what's the type of this sands, it's the brachen, it's what's the controlling it, then you will just need to Google it and try to find out. But then you can see different shape of sand and this is the desert that goes into the coast. And actually we have it here in Oman. I just wanted to show you another example that uh, normally we don't find in, uh, in other places, I mean. But here in Oman, we have the Wahiba sands and you can see how it's elongated. It's like what they call it as like the muscle uh, shape. And it's restricted here. But if you go to Rub al Khali, you can see this dunes actually migrating. There is nothing stopping them. They are just moving. But if I can ask you, why what's the reason why this sand doesn't go further than Bidia? Why it doesn't reach into this location? What's preventing this sands? And also another question, why it changes? Why, what's happening here? If I will try to drill and send the Aeolian deposits, look how it can change abruptly from sand dunes into a different kind of rocks, this reddish of uh, Hawasana. And also the Hawasana somehow it cuts here because of this wadis. Okay, we have Jabal Madar here. Anyhow, to answer this question, if you just zoom in, you start to see the wadis. And this is what we call Wadi Badha. 
So this wali badha is the the, the wali the, the while the water is passing by, it take a bit uh, the migrated sand and wash it away from the and it doesn't allow it to migrate further more. And this is the uh, I mean you see some dunes over here, which means that there is some dry season. So let's say in case if there is no much water in this area, what will happen to Bidi Al Wasl? I will leave it for your imagination. Okay. Other beautiful places, Hawaii. So what do you see here? You see the color change. There's a reef has been build, building up over this location. And you can see the mainland over here. And Hawaii is one of the island that actually as the plate tectonics moving, the the different plates, it uh, it was uh, cre created, let's say. So uh, if you talk about the carbonate deposit, you will try to understand to see how can carbonate actually forms in these uh, areas. And you try to understand it. Let's see, I will just, I'm curious just to check the length again. So around, yes, uh, 1.5 kilometers. So for our rocks in uh, the Cretaceous time, this kind of environment could be expected uh, during that time. But of course it was thousands of kilometers. It was so big that even uh, another reef has been built up in, in, within it. And this is like one of the example. You can see this shallow water and it's known for the biologists. There's uh, the coral reef triangle somewhere here because there's a lot of coral reef uh, uh, flourishing in this areas, and that's why many people are going to Indonesia, to Malaysia to go and explore and try to understand this. But somehow I can uh, say that one day the Arabic Peninsula was submerged with water like this, and then that's why we have this carb thick carbonate around us. Okay? There is uh, also another island I was checking it yesterday here, so yes. This is small atolls. So you can see this island, this carbonate reef is building up around a, 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 a paleovolcano, and then the volcano stops, and then you have now restricted environment where you can form your source rock maybe in future. Okay, I see Mazen Salman. I think we have in Oman nice wadi shapes where it was Palio rivers kind of meandering and in Qurayyad they are very stunning river dominated delta. Uh, yes, Mazen. In Qurayyad area you have this delta. Okay, let's go. Because you asked for it. Here Qurayyad. You, saw, you see this wadi and now there is a, 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 yes, this is the wadi and then you have the delta. So let's go as you go and see, so you see the whole, let's say the most of the Dagmar area in Qurayyat actually is a delta uh, plain. And you can see, and you'll notice that the deposit over here, actually it comes from the rocks from this area. We're just beyond the uh, Wadi Dhiq. And you see how it cuts the carbonate rocks until it reach into the sea. Okay. Uh, one thing because of the time, I know that uh, I took a lot of time. Uh, this is one of the deposits uh, in Oman. You can see the salt domes actually in this area. And uh, and I hope I'm not mistaken. This is Qarat al Kibrit. So you can see the old source uh, salt, uh, salt of the Precambrian time is coming up from the subsurface. It it, it uh, really deformed part of the sub surface, and uh, some of them it uh, it came out. And beautiful place. Many of the people who are working on the Precambrian rocks, they it's a must place to go and visit. If we go to other side of the continent which is from Oman to Iran actually this salt is coming out so I put this a picture of it and 
uh, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Jashak Salt Dome. You can see this salt when it comes out, what's happening. It spreads all across the area. So now when you compare from two different places, you actually you are trying to build up what's happening around uh, how the salt domes can be created. What is this? Yep. The Barringer Car uh, Carter, Arizona. This is where one of meteorites has been fallen down and you can see how big it is. And if you search in Google Earth, I found out this 360 cities panoramas. This is enable you actually to go and see the area in 360 degrees. So I will show you just one well, and this is uh, the thing. I mean, if you check in Google, you try to, so you see many people, creative people actually generated this KMC file for you. And now you are there. Actually, you can see the meteorites. You don't need even to buy a ticket. You can see how big oh, it is. Is it a meteorite or not? Then I leave it to you for your exploration. Uh, okay, so I will just, sorry for that. I will just skip the glacier environment and structural so let's see if we have other questions we know you know where exactly is Qurayat. yes i know <laughs> okay thanks for sharing such it give okay thank you guys okay so i will exit the photos a lot of things i mean i i, I thought like i will be short in time but uh, i can show you all the pictures but unfortunately I cannot, just I will leave you one of the fun things actually you can find also in Google. Uh, if I remember is exactly, yes, the Bahamas. Let's go to Bahamas and something very interesting in this location. Yes, what is this? Yeah, you can learn and enjoy you guys. I mean, this is a pirate island. Is it real or not? I leave it to you, but sometimes it disappeared just by clicking a layer. So just enjoy it. All right. So this is about Google Earth and how to utilize things. Uh, and uh, and you can go, of course, go to YouTube to uh, to check it out and uh, understand more about a certain location, uh, which I don't have time to go through it now. So that's why this is one of the graphs that I want to just share and. Uh, for you to make think about for now some of you i don't think all of you will just say oh it looks like fun let's go and check google earth and then at one point you will feel ah this is hard and then what uh, i'm not talking about google earth i'm talking about in general it's the learning curve so by with time your experience is like that it's not just a straight that you will learn and understand it you will know that you will go up and down in a way that you reach a level that you have no idea okay you think you know and then or not and then it actually makes sense until you reach a point that you actually did it and if you keep this in mind this is a normal cycle happens to everyone so if you know that you will be encountering a moment that you feel that you cannot do anything then it is uh if you just remember this picture and then you will just be motivated i do that sometimes so does Google Earth shows a real-time images or just old images? The real-time, actually, this is one of the updates in uh, Google uh, Earth. If you go to the web-based application, so in Chrome, actually, it is now uh, update uh, real-time images. So they are updating it because it's in the web. The, the application, you need always to update it. And they are trying now, I think, mainly to go to the web-based because to give you the, the uh, present uh, time. And can oil and mining industry depend on this up without using real aerial photos? Well, I can tell you that some of this uh, satellite image is uh, not accurate. I mean, for example, in Oman, if you zoom in Oman, you won't see any oil fields, even though we know that there's oil fields. And there's also the military, military places. It will be covered. It won't show. So that's why I don't, I'm don't. i not saying that you will have the real thing, the, the actual Earth. But there is uh, some place that will be covered. And you can notice even Google Earth, if you will see this, that image is changing from, it was captured by 2002 and there is something 2020. So it differs to one place to another. So you just need uh, to use it in for scientific curiosity. 
But if you want for the real uh, work in mining, for example, especially because in oil, uh, it's a bit difficult because it's more of the surface uh, pictures. But if you want to, for the one in mining, you can use it. And actually, I know that Muhammad Al-Kindi, sometimes uh, when before he explore for caves and other, Dr. Muhammad Al-Kindi, he always go to Google Earth and he play with it. Okay, oh, sorry. Uh, I was... So the, again, the learning pet. So keep in mind that there will always be, uh, there will be a learning uh, uh, pet. It will fit the, if, uh, in the concept. You will think it's okay, and then you will have your question, and then you will say, "Okay, I cannot do it anymore." But then, with you trying, you will try to understand it. And that's why you build up. Uh, how to read a scientific paper? Because of the time, I, I think I took <laughs> I took longer than it was supposed to be. Uh, just a tip: you can download a lot of scientific papers and you won't have time to go through it all of them so that's why you just try to focus and for me i will just give you this advice start with the abstract introduction go through the caption and figures and then the conclusion by that you will have a bit of understanding of the papers and then you decide if you want to read it from a to z because i tried that i for me when i try to read from a to z there is a lot of information and you always remember that uh, those guys to generate this paper, they had a lot of analysis, they had a lot of work. So it's difficult just to grasp it. But if there is something you are doing it for your studies, then I advise to go from A to Z. But to scan it before, go the, like this. Again, abstract, introduction, and then go to uh, caption and figures, and then you reach uh, the conclusion. Yep, I see. It's always better to see rocks rather than virtue. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, uh, thank you for saying that. Yes, it's true. But sometimes you uh, also you need to be prepared for it. Social media is not only for just socializing. You can use it as a scientific platform to share. And uh, I, actually, I follow many people in Instagram, which is uh, very interesting to, I mean, to follow them because they have very good knowledge. And they are sharing it across the in their account, which I uh, Instagram, and also there's in, uh, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, WhatsApp, YouTube. There is a, so the social platform can be used also to understand. So I will just share some of the uh, account that I encourage you to follow. Of course, GSO if, uh, account. There's the the Geo Group. Sultan Qaboos University, there is Geology Net, that is very interesting. Geonology, I really love this account. Uh, Dr. Mohamed uh, uh, Naqi from uh, uh, Kuwait University, very interesting to follow this guy. Geohammer, and also the KSA Geology account. And there is a lot of people, and by the way, Mazin Salman is one of the people that I really like also because he always put things and perspective and you see how this guy is enthusiastic about the geology of Oman. Google, always Google it. I mean, if you don't understand it now, it's very easy just to take your phone and Google and you will get the, the question. So before it was difficult for some people to find the, uh, uh, the information because they will have to go to the library. But now all the information is in your palm of your hand. The challenge is to know what is real, what is not. So that's why you can uh, always keep in mind that because anyone can write any uh, information, anything. I mean, myself, I can just write ophiolite, uh, or let's say carbonate is made of uh, igneous rock. <laughs> it's funny, but it can be done. So that's why you always need to check and try to judge yourself. Never stop being curious. And of course, I'm talking about the scientific way. Don't be curious in other stuff, but okay, in other stuff, but uh, which is uh, useful for you. And this is why you always need to have that learning uh, behavior. I mean, you want to learn, you want to have that curious to understand more and more. That's why while you are sitting in this, uh, during this time, try to utilize this time by going to courses, meet up with friends virtually and talk about it. I, in one point, I wanted to just to have a, like a call of action. Let's have this hashtag geo community. So each one of us can share for his knowledge or photos or while he's doing uh, checking Google Earth some places. 
so we can learn from each other. So again, we use the social platform to understand and learn from each other. So I will recommend if you really want, uh, you are interested in Google Earth and how you can link uh, this books, Understanding Earth, there's a lot of good exercises there. And there is the landform of the world with Google Earth. Uh, I bought these two books. It's very useful. And I'm using it just to understand and see how what's happening around us. So by the end, I would like to thank you guys. I mean, thanks for the comments uh, and uh, your contribution. And I, I'm sorry that I took longer than what is needed. But I hope, uh, I just wanted to care, make sure that you, at least you have now a test of what Google Earth can do and what you can do with uh, by yourself by learning from a different platform. Always go and check, build your own project in Google Earth and then you can share it. So I, if you have like really interesting places, uh, I would like also to share it with me with in this email or in Twitter, Instagram. So by that, uh, I can, let's check me, uh, let's check the end the comments if there's any burning question. Uh, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for the nice word. By that then, thank you if you wanted to contact me again. So you have the email here or just contact GSO and I will, uh, Abdul Munir definitely will be, uh, be in touch with me so we can go and through the questions. Send your KMZ files. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you again and wish you all the best and I hope you enjoyed this set of workshop. Good night.